welcome to everyone joining us online. We're glad you're joining us. We already had a move of God. So we're just continuing it, amen? We had a move of God in practice. We had a move of God in prayer. Hallelujah. So we're just going to continue. Father God, I just thank you for tonight. I thank you for each and every person who's here. I thank you for each and every person who is here to worship you and to praise you. We know that when we praise you, inhabit our praises. And you have said that this is a place of habitation. And so, God, we know you're already here. But we expect more tonight. We expect more glory. We expect more power. We expect signs, wonders, miracles, transformation tonight. We come expecting. Because we know that you're not a weeny, teeny little God. But you're huge. You're mighty. You're powerful. We don't take that for granted. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just say hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We want to climb the mountain of the Lord tonight with clean hands and a pure heart. So right now we even repent if there's anything we need to repent for. We ask you to cover us with your blood so that we can enter in. Cover any inadequacy with your blood, Jesus. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It didn't go. Hallelujah. It went to the next song. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
It's breaking through, it's breaking through, it's breaking through. 
and turn it into a mathematical equation. It is so true. But here's the deal. Tonight, if, when we first got here, we, we just walked in the door, getting to ready for the tonight. Both Sarah and I are like, something's funky in here. There's, there's something cloudy in here. And the more we just were like, what is this? What is this? The more we asked, what is this? What is this? The more and more it became apparent that there was a smoke in the room. And there was a smoke in the room. And at one point, Sarah went downstairs and then came back upstairs. And as soon as she crossed the threshold back there, if she could smell the sacrifice happening in the room. When that happens in the spirit realm, that means that you are going to a new level. Amen. Hear me in this. The word for 2020, one of the many good words, was breaking cycles. In order to break a cycle, you have to establish a new cycle. It's in order to get the, the him who has much more will be added. We have to break the old one of he who has less. Everything will be taken away. We have to stop it. In 2020 was the year that God turned everything around, though you didn't even know he was doing it. He was the way maker in the midst of all of it. And he was breaking the cycles that have been in your life for years and years and years and years. And you wondered, would this ever change? Is this ever going to get better? Is this anything that I can actually have hope for? And the Lord says, you are about to step into the fruit of the season I just put you through. Where well, you would have expected that ground to fall from underneath of you, where you would expect the other shoe to drop, suddenly the shoe that's going to drop is blessing. Some of you have already experienced the first fruits of this, but I tell you, it's only, only, only first fruits. Some of you have experienced this. Some of you are like, I'm still waiting for it. When's the ground going to drop? I tell you right now, stop saying that. I 
break that word curse right now in the name of Jesus. I say, when is the blessing of God going to fall on your head and bring you higher than you've ever been before and bring you into the dreams that you've had, into the destiny that God has been speaking to you for years? Tonight is your night to break the cycle and go to the new place that is greater than what you have in the name of Jesus. said about the threshold that just just hit me i heard the spirit of the lord saying what are you on the threshold of what are you on the threshold of because now is the time your your next level is on the other side of that threshold so what is your what are you on the threshold of because now is the time to press in now is the time to pray now is the time to step boldly through the threshold and the lord says your next levels are on the other side so what is a different is something different for somebody else something it, it's pressing through something it's doing something that you haven't done before doing something that you know you need to do but you've never done it's stepping out again and maybe trying that thing that you tried before and, and it didn't work but the lord is saying whatever you are on the threshold of your next levels are on the other side tonight in Jesus mighty name hallelujah I hear the roar I hear the roar there's victory I hear a roar I hear a roar
believe that tonight? Yes. Do you believe that he is the God of the breakthrough? Yes. Hallelujah. Come on. The Lord said some powerful things already tonight. The Lord said some powerful things last week. I want you to understand that. I didn't say powerful things. Andrew didn't. Sarah didn't. God did. God did to you. He's not a respecter of persons. has nothing to do with me. So the level you attach your faith to what God has said, the, 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 the level you say you can have an attitude. You know, the, the Bible says that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violence, ta the violent take it by force. It's not talking about natural violence. Understand. We've joked about this. I've preached about this before. What it's really talking about is a Finding Nemo mindset. What's that mean? The seagulls in Finding Nemo. Mine? 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 It's saying, this is a promise of God and it's mine. It's mine. And I'm looking. Mine? Mine? Where, where, wherever there's a promise. Mine? 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 And you have to have an attitude that says, this is mine. The kingdom of God suffers, allows you to have an attitude that says, God promised it. Yes. It may not look like it. It may not feel like it. And no, nobody around me may believe it. My, my God is bigger than all of those things. And I choose to believe what the Lord has said. So I want you to take that attitude, whatever, whatever's been spoken up here and whatever that meant for your heart, whatever that bigger thing is, whatever that next level thing is and say, that's mine. And then, it, then you have that attitude and the Lord will give you what you need to walk it out. It's not by your strength, not by your might, not by your power, but by his spirit that it will come to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do me a favor. Turn around. Greet two or three people and tell them that the promises of God are mine. everybody doing tonight Good. hallelujah if you're new here if you've you know you visited a couple times and you you you, uh, you might be asking yourself do they always act like that what's the answer Kim as often as we can we believe in the Holy Spirit here at High Praise Central Minnesota amen, amen. Yeah. the Holy Spirit's pretty important part Godhead equally important right and the Holy Spirit is here. He's in us. He works through us. That he, he, He's alive and he's active. And he has something to say about what we're gathered here together to do. Right? And his plan is better than my plan. And, you know, I, I, I found out a long time ago, things just go better and things go smoother when, it, when I let him do his plan. You know, I, I plan. I get stuff together. But, but he's got a better plan. You know? Or, or, or maybe a better way. He, he can tweak mine and make it so much better. Right? <laughs> That little, especially, sometimes it comes through my wife, and it's that, don't go there. <laughs> Anyways. But I want to welcome each and every one of you. So glad to see all of you. I'm so glad to see. Man, you guys are awesome. Just the praise, the worship, the, the, the energy, the excitement the, 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 and it's, 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 that you're putting to God, that you're lifting up to heaven. I love it. I love it. I love it. It just, it just warms my heart so much. If you guys had any, Kim knows. Kim, Kim was here in the beginning. It was not like this. No, it was Kim and us dancing, and everyone else like, what is wrong with them? And uh, 
It takes some, some ground to plow here in central Minnesota, but we believe that you can praise and you can worship, and you, you're our God. You know, everything that he's done for us. Come on, guys. Everything that he has done for us, I'm already preaching, but everything that he has done for us, we, 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 uh, we can get a little excited about him. We can go to a football game, right? I was there. You know, how many, if, you, if you follow football, if you're a Vikings fan, uh, my apologies. But if you are, and you've ever been to a football game, I was at the Hale Randy game. One of the, the greatest plays of his career. I was there and watched it happen. And when that play happened, the place erupted, like eardrum splitting. I'm high-fiving people I don't know. Um, we're hugging. I'm hugging people I know. That's normal for Danny. But in, in the stadium, you know, not so much. I got beer spilled all over me, you know, from the people a few rows up. Didn't matter. Didn't care. Best friends in the world, right? We're screaming and we're hooting and we're hollering and we're just, Yes! It's football, guys. As, as, as Pastor Robert says, you're carrying a bag of wind across uh, an imaginary line on a piece of real estate. How much greater is what Jesus did for us? Amen. So if we can go to that football game, or maybe that's not your thing, maybe you're celebrating because you found that pair of shoes at half off, and you're like, yes! <laughs> right? Whatever it is, we can celebrate <laughs> Jesus so much greater. Kim's like, yes, I can amen to that one. Right? <laughs> And, and so that's what we just believe here, you know. We and and I know it's I born and raised Central Minnesota. I know it's not normal uh, that you don't see that around here. But um, I had to get a little bit of that out of me so I get more of him in me. Amen. Amen. All right. Yeah. Whew, okay, I'm done preaching for a second. Um, again, I want to welcome you, High Praise Central Minnesota. Uh, if you don't know, I'm Pastor Chris, senior pastor here, along with my wife, co-pastor with my wife, uh, my beautiful wife Sarah. And because, uh, you know, I couldn't do this without her. The Bible says if one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. That means this woman's worth 9,000 to me. And it is, I think that might be an underestimation. I literally would not be here today without her. Anyways, um, so um, we are just glad you are here and, and we want to welcome you. And if, if you don't have a church home, we just, uh, we invite you to come back a few times. Check it out because at High Praise Central Minnesota, you never know what you're going to get. Amen. So, anyways, for you home folks, you know what time it is. It is offering, offering time. time. Time for our Saturday evening tithes and offerings. If you need an envelope, there should be one in the seat back in front of you. If you're giving by cash, you can just write your information on there so we can give you credit for your giving. Um, and if you're writing out checks, you can write out to High Praise HPCM. Either of those will do. We have an app. If you're an app person, you can download Tithely and kind of go through the one-time setup deal. And uh, then you can give quickly and easily after that. And our friends online, hi, Chima, hi, whoever else is watching. Morgles, love you guys. Hey, Zach, what's up, buddy? Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, Sarah's just catching up, so if I didn't call you out, that's, that's uh, her fault. Anyway, um, <laughs> you guys can give any. 9,000, but it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, that's what I'm talking about foot and mouth, but you know, she somehow brings it around. Um, but uh, you, yeah, our friends online can give any time at www.highpraisecentralmn.com. All right, you know, uh, you know that, that God is a giving God, yeah. that giving is a, is a kingdom principle. And uh, last week, we actually talked just, I just a little bit about the, this idea of first Sunday of the, or Saturday of the year, first fruits offering and kind of how, how that works. And uh, I, I know for a fact that, uh, that some people that, that gave um, last week in that first fruits offering um, have already received a harvest from it. And I suspect there's probably more than I even know, right? You know, because the principle works. God's not, not a man that he would lie, nor the son of man that he would repent. We have to put faith into it. Sometimes a little patience into it. A lot of times some patience into it. All right. But it is a kingdom principle. It does work. And, and uh, it, you know, it's not just about what we, we can receive. It's about our heart position and our heart attitude. You know, because from the beginning, I talk about this all the time, but it's so important. Um, that from the beginning, God knew, you know, God wants a relationship with you. He wants your whole heart, right? He doesn't want part of your heart. He wants your whole heart. The number one thing that can steal our heart away from him, even part of our heart away from him, is wealth and finances. It's just how it's been since the beginning. We know it. We understand it. And, and, uh, and that's why giving is so important. That's why the Bible says um, that we need to, God loves a cheerful giver, a hilarious giver, somebody whose heart is in tune with him, because that means that, that, you know, that, that stuff doesn't move us. 
And now we, our entire hearts open to receive the fullness of what he has for us. That's what it's really about. Amen. And then, uh, then he can, we can turn that around and use that for, for kingdom expansion and to, to reach the lost, the broken, the hurting, and just do um, all these amazing things that God has called us to do. It's a pretty good deal. And by the way, then there's promises attached to that giving as well. So let, let's take your gifts in your hand, and we're going to pray those promises right now. How about that? Father God, I thank you for each gift. I thank you for each giver. I thank you for this opportunity to sow into your kingdom. Lord, as we sow tonight, we thank you for those promises that say it will be given back to us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, that we will receive back on every wave. I thank you, Father God, that your word says that you rebuke the devourer on our behalf yeah. Yeah. when we give cheerfully, when we give hilariously, when we, when we, we have the right heart position. So we appropriate those promises as we give cheerfully and hilariously tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Okay, a few quick announcements. Um, this coming Monday, so Monday evening, we will be doing our second Navigating the Word service. Um, Monday nights, we've just been doing teachings. We just got done with Revival Academy, and, and we're starting Navigating the Word. We're looking into how can we read and study our Bible better, um, the, the, the written Word of God um, but, uh, but also use the spoken, the rhema word to help guide us in, in doing that. So we're, we're diving into that. For those of you who were here, you, you just remember you have homework assignment. It's an easy one. Nate already figured it out earlier today and he didn't even realize it. I think Kurt or somebody already got their homework and, and answered it ahead of time. So, so you guys are doing good, but remember you have homework assignment. Um, and, uh, but if you, if you weren't there the first week, you can still come. There's, there, uh, um, it's, it's, uh, it's not a graded sort of thing or anything like that. It's just to help us navigate the Word. So, um, uh, Friday, Monday night, 6.30 p.m., we encourage you to come as often as you can. I believe that God is going to teach us and grow us in our ability to, to hear His voice and understand His Word. Amen? Amen. All right. Um, and also then coming up in a few weeks, uh, our next Gates of Freedom is, is a Friday Friday, January 22nd, 7 o'clock here at the church. Uh, this is our Inner Healing and Deliverance Ministry. If you're interested in that, want to know more, please go to our website. There's links on the website. It will take you to a little form you can go through that explains the process so I don't have to explain it every week. Um, so go, go ahead and check that out. And, and please, if you want to participate, sign up. You hit the submit button. I will get a response so I know how many people that, so that we're coming so that I can have teams prepared, the correct amount of teams prepared and all that. Um, and then finally, I don't have a a uh, slide for this yet I'm I'm halfway there but um, our next men's group for if you're interested in our men's group um, is meeting this the Friday January 15th Friday January 15th here at the church 6 30 p.m. Um, and we will be kind of doing what we have been doing but like I said last week we're also going to be figure out our next fun thing that we can go out and do axe throwing something like that some <laughs> guy thing um, <laughs> And if you're interested in, in uh, signing up and, um, and uh, getting information and in, 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 uh, texts about that, uh, you can text the keyword bacon, 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 uh, to the number you see on the screen, and then you will get our men's group updates. And, of course, any of the other ones that you see on the screen there as well, if you just want uh, information about uh, if we have to close because of weather, aren't you glad that, uh, that we haven't had anything like that this year? The declaring decree, we won't have to this year. Um, but but then you can text the keyword sign up for those sort of announcements as well. All right. Anything else, Pastor Sarah, that I missed? No. No? All right. So you guys get ready to get into the Word a little bit tonight. Amen. How many of you guys just love the Word of God? Amen. Mm. That's amazing. And isn't our God just amazing? Yes. He really is. I, you know, I... I, you, you can you can get up here and you can preach this stuff and you can live this stuff and you can do this stuff and sometimes it's really easy. Well, you don't have to preach it, but but yeah. it's really easy to take things for granted. And I had a week this week where where God just did things that I know He does that I teach that He does. I've given examples, um, but He 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 did it again in our, in my life, and I was just like, wow, just <laughs> wow. I know all this stuff. I yeah. teach it, but just God, you're just amazing. Yeah. Amen. You know, had stuff going on in our lives. I'll give you the tiny bit of stuff going on in our lives. Called up a prophet, Bob and Sharon Parks, who we're really close to. Didn't tell them what was going on. Just said, just said, hey, you guys want to pray over us? And they started praying. Bob called everything out. Amen. Andrew heard it. He, because we recorded it. Like, exactly. He didn't know anything that was going on. Just boom, right there. I'm like, 
And I know this, I know this has, happens to me all the time, but it still was amazing. Because our God is amazing, right? Amen. And that's what I love about his word, both the written and the prophetic word. You just never stop being amazed by it. Amen? Amen. Well, last week uh, we had a special service that we do at the beginning of every, every year with, that we call Looking Forward. And um, in our Looking Forward services, uh, what, what we did last week, it kind of varies from week to week. But um, what, we, what we normally do is we, um, uh, what we did last week is myself, Sarah, Andrew, um, Tammy and Steve came up and we gave, uh, we kind of shared what prophetically we felt God was saying for, um, for High Praise Central Minnesota, for individuals, for, for this nation, whatever, uh, what he was saying for 2021. And what we, we normally do with those services is we, we, we focus primarily on the prophetic word. What is God prophetically saying? Um, and for 2021, um, and then what we typically do then is we come back in the weeks after that, and I teach on what was prophesied the week before. Does that make sense? Andrew, can you just go hit the looking forward slide for me? I should get control back. Um, anyways, so, so that's what we're doing here tonight. Last week, uh, those prophetic words were released. So I encourage you, if you weren't here, you can go online and listen to them. Um, we all kind of stuck pretty close to our 15 minutes. <laughs> bubble which was great and amazing i mean that was a you that was a miracle of god right there you guys witnessed a miracle if you were here last week. <laughs> all of us a miracle for me. primarily right here right I, I told you guys i was going to only talk for 15 minutes and i hit 15 minutes on the nose you know, might as well use it all right anyway um so 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 yeah so um uh, that's what we did last week, so I encourage you to go back and listen to it. However, for, for tonight, you don't have to have listened to it in order to receive from what we're talking about tonight. Um, and and you, you'll see when we get into it. So you don't have to have, um, you, you know, I won't be talking about um, a lot of details or anything like that, but I encourage you to go back and listen to it. That makes sense? Yeah. All right, so cool. So here, here's, the, here's the setup, and here's, here's what we're, we're uh, going to talk about tonight. Um, so many words, um, in fact, I think pretty much everybody's, said something to the effect of that, um, and, and by the way, not just here in this house, but across, you know, prophetic circles, so many, so many prophets of the Lord have said so similar things, so you guys were all in tune, but um, they said that what happened in 2020 was kind of a setup for what's going to happen in 2021 and, and, and beyond. You know, these words of the Lord for a year isn't like, God's not limited to do a calendar year. He doesn't care about our calendar, but he cares about our awareness. And in the new year, we're always aware of that. We're doing the resolutions and all that. And so he kind of speaks through our awareness. Uh, as long as we're paying attention to that, we might as well pay attention to him. Okay. But, but uh, 2020, um, you know, was a different year than any of us have ever experienced. Um, and in the words, so many pr prophets of the Lord and prophetic people have been saying that 2020 was a divine setup for 2021 and beyond. So um, it, it, it was it, things like uh, 2020 was, was about lessons learned, what we need to carry forward, uh, what we learned in, from 2020 into 2021, um, that it was a season of preparation, consecration, all that, that sort of thing. Okay, the, the, These were the common language that we heard. So... Um, it was an extremely common theme. Therefore, I thought that uh, we should first, before we really look into what God was saying for 2021 and beyond, we should look at the le what were the lessons we learned from 2020 that we're supposed to apply to, to 2021 so that we can be prepared, right, um, the way that all these prophets have said, you, you know, 2020 prepared you. Well, how did it prepare me, right? So... I'm not, I'm not here to tell you everything that God did to prepare everybody, but God gave me some themes that I think apply to most of us, and hopefully even through this, this, this conversation that, that, uh, that you can take this, what we do here, and apply it to maybe specific things God showed you in, for your life in 2020 that you can carry forward into 2021. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so, because some of the lessons that we learned um, this past year are corporate, kind of apply to everybody. And some are very personal and, and, and apply to us or to our family. Okay, so I'm going to give you five things that God highlighted to me about 2020 that I believe are very important for coming into this next season in 2021 and beyond. You ready? Yep. So these are the five things. All right, and, and uh, we're going to we're going to talk about what happened and then how they they how we can apply them to, to the coming year. Number one is this. Okay, I think 
I think we can all agree, well, I think we can all agree with all these, but number one is this, that, you, that we need to be careful what we believe, or in other words, who we listen to, right? We need to be careful who we listen to. All right, I see some nods, I hear some yaps, okay? All right, so here's the thing. There was plenty, and I emphasize plenty, of wrong information out there in 2020, and straight up lies. Yep. Right, and now I'm not pointing fingers. I'm not. I'm not taking sides or whatever. It's just out there. It's everywhere. Yes. Okay, yeah. and and, uh, and it's it's just it's literally all over the place. There, there it was it was a a year where, where a lot of people just lost trust in everything, in, in media, in the church, in 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 our leaders, if we ever had any in the first place. Right, um, and all these sort of things. I mean, it was it was it's whatever side of anything you fall on. Trust was a big issue, okay? And we need to be careful what we believe. Um, and, and, you know, here's the thing about this too, is that it, it also, what you're hearing, what you're believing could be factually true, but still lead us in a wrong biblical direction. You with me? Something could be factually true, but, but, but could tug on, our, on our, um, our human fleshly tendencies to be offended, even if it's true. Oh, and, and, and that's leading you in the wrong direction, even though it's true. Are you with me? Okay. Now, I want you to understand, it does not matter who the source is. Okay. I include myself. It doesn't matter what I, I say. We need to test what is said against what God said. Amen. Right? You, I encourage you. I implore you. Take what I say. Test it against the Word of God. Study it for yourself. Absolutely. I am a man. I am flawed. I can make mistakes. All right? I mean, my wife doesn't, but I do. <laughs> yeah. I get a look. Okay. I love her. She's just awesome. <laughs> but, but we have to... Be you guys are laughing because you see me getting in more and more trouble. Yeah. Yeah. You, you didn't hear what Steve said. Oh, what, you see you, you getting me in more trouble over there? Yeah. So that one's going to come back later. That's going to come back later, you're right. Yeah, when she gets the microphone, look out. No. Um, all right, I better go back to making fun of Joy. Andrew. Um, <laughs> but we, we need to, yeah. We, we need to be careful what we believe and what we listen to, right? James chapter 1, verse uh, 19 to 21. So check this out. Dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be, what? Quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to become angry. Oh, there's, we've probably all heard the scripture, right? There's so much truth, so much truth in this. But check this out. This is James 1, 19. It goes on. So why do we, need, in other words, why do we need to be um, quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry? Look what it says in verse 20, 21. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Yes. Amen. All right? Plenty of opportunity in 2020 to, to produce um, the, not produce the righteousness that God desires. Plenty of opportunities to not produce that kind of thing, right? Yeah. Plenty. No shortage of it. Therefore, get rid of all mortal filth and evil that is so prevalent and uh, humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. That word planted in you is from him, not from cable news, not from social media, all right? Not from your neighbor, not even from me. I mean, through me, the word can come, uh, understand. But I've got my own opinions about what's going on, all right? And I'll tell you, and I know I'm right. <laughs> like all of you know you're right right it wouldn't be your opinion if you didn't think you were right so yes I'm right that's why you've got to go to the word planted in you Amen. right and that's why I need to be quick to listen slow to speak because I want to you know quick to not, not just quick to listen to your neighbor quick to listen to the spirit of the Lord in you saying zip it right? Amen. zip it if we could just learn that lesson from 2020, <laughs> right? Say, uh, zip it, you know, and just stop speaking sometimes, all right? So, so, so why, and put it another way, why do we need to be quick to listen, slow, slow to, to uh, speak? 
because it consecrates you. And then look at what this, this, the verses after is saying. So that you, so that you can be righteous. Um, so that you can get rid of all that filth. All right? You're not going to get rid. Well, put it, put it in this way. Um, that, that it helps us get rid of that moral filth. Because we're not going to see the prophetic promises of 2021 and beyond manifest while we're standing in our own filth. Right? We need to get out of that junk. We need to get out of that mess. And 2020 gave us a really clear, obvious opportunity to maybe see things in ourselves and around us that we hadn't seen before. And it's a really clear opportunity. Okay, you know what? I'm going to get away from this stuff. I'm going to be careful about this stuff. That lesson with you. Because here's the thing. At some point, praise the Lord, things are going to die down. You know, until the next thing, because that's how the world works, until Jesus comes back. But things will die down for a while. When things die down, do not let that lesson just float away. So, oh, now I can start speaking again and student, all that sort of stuff. Keep the lesson. It's important because if we want to see the signs, the wonders, the miracles, if we want to see a great awakening, if we want to see all the blessing and breakthrough and favor, if we want to see, um, see our enemies made uh, our footstools in our very presence, we can't be standing in our own filth means we have to watch what we say, watch what we believe, be, be listening to the Lord first and foremost above all else. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right? Put it another way. Well, part, part of my, my, my word for 2021 and other people's words was that things in the dark would be exposed. Right? And, and even put on trial was, was part of my word. So if that's going to be the case, if things in the dark are going to be exposed and put on trial, all right? You sure don't want to be someone that's been in agreement with what's being exposed and put on trial. Yes. Right? right? Yeah, you mean, because you're going to be right in center stage with that. So be careful what you listen to and who you believe is a valuable lesson that we can carry with us the rest of our lives. But I think it's critical in 2021, if those words are going to come to pass, we want to be on the right side of the word. Yes. Or we could put it another way in a single word that really encapsulates this whole thing. In 2021, we need discernment. Yes. We need discernment. We need to listen to God first, not last. Not when we're in the filth and say, God, get me out. Maybe listen to him beforehand so we never, so we can whoop, step around that thing and, and go around that pothole, go around that landmine. Amen? Amen? All right? So that's number one. Be careful what you listen to. Be careful what you believe. Number two. We can't take anything for granted. Right. 2020 told, taught us you, we cannot take anything. <laughs> Stealing my thunder, buddy. <laughs> I had it all set up real nice. Sorry. Is the Big trouble. <laughs> Big trouble. Yes. Yes. I know. I know. Y'all knew I was going there, right? We can't take anything for granted. Oh, so pretend like Andrew didn't say anything. We can't can't take our health for granted, right? I mean, I, I think. Uh, I mean, so I, I praise the Lord that uh, that you know, um, in, in this church, the, the people that got COVID, um, I was probably the one that got it the worst, or me, maybe me and one other person. But most of the people here got it. I mean, really minor, right? And I praise the Lord for that. I mean, I believe there was prayer behind that. I believe that 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 that's God, there was a hand, God's hand of protection around that. But um, you know, as God gave us a strategy, but um, we couldn't take our even even in that we couldn't take our health for granted. We prayed, yeah. we sought God for that strategy. We took communion for how many days in a row, and we had a declaration that we declared. And then God gave us strategies how to pray for people when they were sick and all this sort of stuff, right? And uh, and, and so. Um, we can't take for granted our health, even no, no matter how healthy we are. We've all heard the stories, right? Um, eating out. Oh. oh. Monday can't come soon enough, guys. My car is a mess of french fries and wrappers and, you know. Do you sit in the drive through right? Yeah. You want to kill like five hours, just go to Popeyes. You know? Yeah. You know. um, I mean, just 
I, ser seriously, guys, like just sitting, it's going to a restaurant with, with, with you guys maybe after a service or glory night or something and, and just, just talking God and just, just laughing and, and, and loving God and just sitting around and, and, and connecting like that. Oh, we miss that, right? We miss that. All right. So uh, we can't, it was, it, but that's before that was something that we took for granted, having a job. Now, um, it, 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 jobs come, go, move around. I get all that sort of stuff, but boy, it was more highlighted right in, in in 2020 depending on what industry you're in okay um there was a time in 2020 just leaving the house we realized you know that that we take that for granted just getting out just i want to do something anything let's just go like stare at a tree i don't know okay <laughs> relationships talking face to face to somebody during that same time yes. you know i you know how how little i have seen and talked to my parents in, you know in the in the in this past year I've, i have but just so much less you know that, that those sort of things and then of course andrew toilet paper, toilet paper. <laughs> who would have thought that we would ever that we were taking toilet paper for granted <laughs> And yet, here we are, twice now, this has come back around, this, t this toilet paper thing, right? Now, some of them, I mean, obviously, toilet paper, some of it sounds silly, but we had to examine some things in 2020 that we had, would never have considered ever examining before in our lives, right? Things that we previously took for granted. And so, so you know, there's, there's a, qu a broader question we can ask, what have we taken for granted in our lives? What have we taken for granted? Yeah. And, and most importantly, have we taken God for granted? Yeah. Yes. Have we taken God for granted? It's, you know, coming to church and praising and worshiping and, and doing that sort of stuff. I mean, there was a time that we were just like, we don't know, what, 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 we don't know what's going on. If this, if this thing could spiral out of control and because and, and, and we, we didn't know the death rates and all that sort of stuff, when are we ever going to get back to church, you know? And, and should we? I mean, am I, you know, the decisions that leaders have to make. Am, am I putting people in harm's way or am I giving in to fear and how you balance? It's, it's crazy. It's crazy, right? And, uh, and, 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 and it's amazing. Even in those situations, it's, it's like, oh, wait a minute. Maybe I should ask God what he thinks I should do about this. <laughs> Right, but you kind of get that. We all get that way, even you, right here, for, even chief sinner, right? Oh, what should I do? What should I do? Sarah, should we do this? And what, you know, you, you, oh, maybe I should ask God. Duh, <laughs> right? You, you kind of take those things for granted sometimes. You know, because God is our provider. Amen. That's right. Even with toilet paper, Andrew. Yeah, Amen. When you need toilet paper yeah. and you can't find any, oh, Father God, we, you we are the Lord. The surplus yeah, we had a surplus here. Lord, <laughs> you're Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. Yeah, we had good timing. God, God was looking out for us. We went to Sam's right before that thing hit. Boom. You know? So. I mean, we could have sold that stuff, you know, 100 bucks a roll. Um, we'd be in a new church building if we did that. Mm hmm you know, one of the things that we really, truly learned I, in 2020 is that so much that we take for granted is out of our control, yes. right? Yeah. The P TP, the, all these sort of things, they're out of our control. I mean, it feels in, in, when things are, life's normal that, it, that we have control over certain things, but we quickly learned that there's so much that's out of our control. So what we, <laughs> yeah. don't, don't get me up on that. Um, <laughs> Uh, don't trip me up there, buddy. No. So there's so much that we can't control, but you know what we can control is who we turn to. Yeah. Right? That we can control. No matter what happens in the world, no matter how crazy things get, we can always control who we turn to. Who we lean on. Who's our source of our strength. Who's our source of peace. He's always there. He never takes time off. He's, he's, he's more than willing, open arms ready for us all the time. And sometimes we take that for granted because we feel like we don't need it because we got our TP. We can go out to eat. We can do all these things, right? But it's, 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 we learned in 2020 how, 
how, um, I don't know, uh, precious some of those things are, how vulnerable some of those things are. Amen? So we can control who we turn to. Another way of maybe saying that is we can only control what we do. Right? We can only control what we do. We can control, the, the, are we people of prayer or not? In 2020, we were people of prayer in this house. We always have been, but we amped it up. We, we did glory nights. We declared. We decreed. We wrote things. We did things. We, we, we you know, it, it, we were going to, if there was a, a stumbling block, a roadblock, if, if, if I, I kind of had the attitude, if I hear, you know, two or three people going through the same thing, we're getting together and we're praying. Amen. Right? And, and we're praying. We're upping the ante and pray, praying, which also includes praising and worshiping. Yep. I can control praise and worship. I can praise and worship him in the middle of the storm. I can praise and worship him when I don't feel it like it. When I, that, that he said, the, the Bible says that he gave us praise for, and worship for the garment, uh, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Yes. There's some spirits of heaviness in 2020. Yes. And he's been, but it's our job to put on that garment of praise. Yes. Right? Yes. Amen. So, so our, that's something we can control. That's something we can do. The declarations, the decrees, we can control that. Are we going to do it or not do it? And of course, above all else, demonstrating what's good and right. Demonst just demonstrating what's good and right. We have every opportunity in 2020 to, to maybe demonstrate some things that we shouldn't. Right? But, but sticking with saying God's way is better. And I'm, I, I'm going to lean on God. Amen? Amen. So who are we turning to? And what are we doing in 2021? How, how does that... That relate well. Actually, I would say that this way: um, who we turn to and what we do in 2021 is going to be that much more critical, right? It was we learned some lessons in 2020. I believe with everything that God is doing. Sarah's word was about the uh, jubilee in drought, and the idea is is that. Kind of the world it was going to be in this area and season of drought, but the children of God, the believers, are, are going to be experiencing jubilee. So, if you want to experience jubilee, you better be leaning on the source of jubilee. Amen. That's right. Right? Trusting in the source of jubilee yeah. and not leaning on the source of drought and, and putting your positioning yourself in that place of drought, right? turning to because because there's going to be opportunity I, I believe i mean it's already happened it literally happened to me this week so there's opportunity in 2021 and beyond in that season of drought to look at things and say oh it's just 2020 all over again things are getting worse oh yeah an opportunity to do that but you learn learned you know better we all do you're sitting here tonight because of this i believe that we need to turn to god more than ever so it may, not, it may look like that around us, but our God is bigger. Our God is better. Our God is greater. Amen? Amen. Psalm 46, our God, uh, God is our refuge and strength, our ever-present help in trouble, yes. in time of need. Amen. Right? This is something we're need, going to need to remember in 2021. We learned this lesson in 2020. Don't forget it. Hebrews uh, chapter 4. Oops. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 4. Um. Our God, uh, no. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, and yet did not sin. Now notice this in verse 16. Then let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we, we may receive mercy uh, and find grace to help us in our time in need. In 2021, I believe we're going to need to go boldly go before the throne of grace. We've, we, we, we were almost forced and kicked into it in 2020, right? You know, there's no place else to go. But now we need to learn the lessons, and we need to not go there last. We need to go there first. Amen. Yeah, that's right. right? We, we need to run to that throne. We, 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 you know, you are a child of God. You have access you know, my son, my kids have access to me because I am their dad. Where other people don't have access, they have access. They have too much access. Sometimes I wish there was less access <laughs> so I could just sleep. <laughs> but your God doesn't, God doesn't need to sleep. Yeah. He is there. He is willing. He is able. Yes. And you can go boldly before that throne of grace yes. in your time of need. Yes. So it may look like in the world around you that you have a need, but you go to him. 
You lean on Him. You go boldly to Him. Amen? That's something that we can learn and carry forward into uh, 2021. All right, that's number two. Can't take anything for granted. Number three. Let's back up. Creative solutions. Creative solutions. Now, be, oh, that's her, I wrote, they moved these things around. But anyways, in 2020, we were forced to get more creative. Mm-hmm. In a lot of ways, because of the previous things that we talked about, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, we were forced to get more creative than ever before uh, in church services. And we were blessed that we already had all the equipment and stuff like that to do live streaming. We were already doing that. But even still, we had to get, get creative with some things. Um, in work, you know, we've, we've all seen the funny commercials now. Dressed in the suit in the top half and and, and uh, boxer shorts in the in the bottom half and you don't or you know cats you know stepping into the Zoom meeting or whatever or you know the the I heard I heard a funny one for those of you who, in 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 uh, office settings you know that that the 2020 version of Reply All is not muting your your phone. Yeah. Uh, so I've had plenty of funny ones of those. I yelled at my kids once when the phone wasn't muted. Um, <laughs> it's just 2020 was a year for that sort of stuff, right? And, and, and we're, it was, we're all learning how to do this remote thing if, if that, that's the kind of job that you have. Um, we had to get creative with that. Businesses had to get creative with that. How we communicate, how we connect. I mean, Zoom's been a huge thing. Um, and, and um, you know, even our kids and youth group, they, they started meeting with Zoom meetings when, when they couldn't, and now they still do that even though they meet together in person. Um, they do that in addition to it because they, they, they enjoyed um, each other's company and, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, we might have had to get creative in our own finances or, you know, depending on what's going on. Okay. Um, you know that it's actually a godly principle. The, this, uh, it's not just a principle. It's, it's a godly principle. It's a grace. It's anointing. It's a power to, be, to, to have creative problem solving. God's a pretty creative God. He's smarter than you. He's smarter than me. He's smarter than anything that man has ever come up with. And if we read their Bible, he's done a lot of creative things, a lot of creative problem solving. I'm not going to put these scriptures up, but you guys know these stories. Joseph. Joseph, at the end of the story of Joseph, he's prime minister, second in charge of all of Egypt. Okay? Um, He's literally prime minister in a time of famine, or we could easily compare that to a time of drought, right? Very much like Sarah's word, right? And, And so he he's... Prime minister in a time of famine, a time of drought, and yet, what got him there? How did he get there? Well, we know his journey, right? He had the dream, he had the, the, the prophetic dream, thrown in the pit, goes to, to Potiphar's house, then goes to the prison, all these sort of stuff. But we constantly see in the story of Joseph that he did what was right inside of the Lord, that God blessed the work of his hand. He just kept, it, it didn't matter, it didn't get him down, it didn't stop him. Wherever, whatever was in front of him, he was just going to do it. And, 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 and he's like, well, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prophesy to this guy in jail and ask him to, to, to um, um, remember me when he's in front of the king. Of course, the guy forgets. But when the time comes, when it's the fullness of God's time, I, it, Joseph was creative, and in, in God was creative in this entire story. How does a guy get from being thrown into that pit to prime minister and then being able to be the, the, the um, conduit through which his entire family is provided for? Right? There, there's, there's some powerful creative things that God did there. Um, Gideon is a great, a great example, right? When, when they finally did the battle, when he got down to the hundred and, and, and they're fighting this, they, they got pots that they're banging and jar, jars or pots or whatever it was and they're yelling and, and somehow they defeated an army with some pots and, and, and some, some, you know, some yelling, okay? That's pretty creative right there, right? Um, if you know the story of Naaman and going to the prophet and, and, and uh, instead of just, let's say, if the Lord your God, you're healed, nope, go into the dirtiest river you can possibly find, the dirtiest, muddiest, stinkiest river and bathe yourself seven times, Right? That's kind of out of the box thinking right there. But that's God specializes in that. And then think of Jesus himself. How many times did Jesus just confound the wise, do crazy things? Oh, you're blind. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and it wasn't just in the miracles, it was his words. You know? And it's a huge thing in, in 2020 is other words that we were talking about this, that in a second. All the words being said, and Jesus would just say something that would just. Make everybody stop? What? It would confound the wise, right? I mean, he put it another way. He had the, 
God put in his mouth the creative thing to say that would change situations, that would change hearts, that would change minds, and that would stop the devil dead in his tracks simply with the word that was spoken from his mouth. And it was, it was, it was n because it was completely unexpected. That's an anointing. We see it throughout the Bible. I could go example after example after, after example. You are the anointed of God. If you're a Christian here, if you've given your life to the Lord, Christian means that you are anointed in the same manner as Christ. Right? Not the same measure, but the same manner. Which means the same power that raised him from the dead lives in, in you, lives in me. That includes a creative problem-solving anointing. Amen. And in 2020, we had to tap into that a little bit. All right? We, uh, some people did well, some people didn't do well. But I think we can all recognize the need to tap into that. Well, I believe with what's coming in 2021 and beyond... What God wants to do, if there's really a third great awakening, yeah. come on, uh, that, 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 that's, that's not something that's going to peter out, but it's going to continue to build. And it's not about a man, it's not about a ministry, but it's, it's, it's just a, a, a nationwide, worldwide, greater awareness of God and God moving in ways that he's never moved before. We're going to have to kind of get creative with some stuff. We're going to have to tap into that, yes. all right? What we did on Tuesday and we saw God move in this powerful way is going to be, com we're going to do something completely different on Wednesday, That's right? right? That's if you've been here for the extras, you know what we're talking about, okay? Amen. So if, if we need, if we put it this way, if we want to see the manifestations of the promises, the 2021 promises of God, if we want to see them manifest, we're going to need to continue to be creative and increasingly creative in doing so. Amen? Amen? In fact, I believe, I know, God's got some creative plans for this church in 2021. Amen. Yeah. Right? I've, been, I, I've been praying to God. There's some things going on. I've been talking to some of you. I've been talking to uh, Bob and Sharon and, and Pastor Robert and, and all these people. And I tell you what, I am so excited. There's something in my spirit that's just getting ready to burst. And, yeah. and I'm just like... And, and, all, and there's actually something Coco said that just blew up in my mind. It was so simple, right? Yeah, was, Coco's like, what do you mean? Yeah, you. <laughs> like, I'm not even in the first row. Why is he talking about me? <laughs> there's no escape. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But she said something, and it's just like, it was, to me, it was kind of like, well, duh. Why didn't I see it that, think of that? Sometimes you need people around you because you're so lost in something, and they just speak something the plain truth and like well, yeah and it just exploded in my spirit exploded in my spirit i'm like oh because because we're we're gonna do things in 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 2021 in in, in beyond in in high, in high price central minnesota that 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 continue to confound the wise that continue to rail against the religious systems in the way that the world says we should do things Amen. and i'm excited for it Because we've never done anything normal. Sarah and I have tried. We've really tried. This is how you're supposed to do church. And God says, nope. 180 degrees, you're going to do church different than everybody else. Well, maybe a little bit like him. No. No. And there comes a point when he does that, you know, like umpteen times. Like, maybe we should just embrace that. And say, hey, what's the new creative, completely out of the box way that we can do church? And... Um, and, and, uh, and I'm, I'm excited for it. Amen? Amen? All right. So that's number three. Number four. Okay. So um, I couldn't, couldn't figure out a good way to say this, but I think this is as good as any. This is number four thing that we learned in 2020. Now, this is, you, know, you guys might be shocked by this one. Social media is, is not good soil. <laughs> yeah, there's your shocked response, right? <laughs> Social media is not good soil. Now, if I, if I were to say to you that social media is kind of toxic, would you agree or disagree? All right, that was pretty resounding agreement right there, right? Pretty, we, we, all kinda, we all know this. We all understand this. The social media has become extremely toxic. I don't think many people, no matter what you believe on any side, anywhere of anything, would look at social media and not agree to some extent it's toxic unless you're the one running it, I guess. Amen. Right? It's not and I think it, so, 
Let me ask you this. We, as Christians, are called to produce good fruit, right? Yeah. Okay? So if you wanted to plant a tree that produces good fruit in the natural, would you plant it in soil that you knew was toxic? No. No, right? Um, would you water it with water you knew was tainted? No. Not, not knowingly. And we all know social media is toxic, okay? So why do we keep going to social media and inserting ourselves right in the middle of that toxicity? And just putting ourselves right in the middle of it and expect it to produce good fruit. <laughs> we know all these persons. We understand this. We all know it. Now, understand what I'm saying here. There are definitely good things about social media. There's no doubt about that, okay? Um, I love... You, I'm getting there, yeah. Private messaging, um, for those of you who are connected with the, high, the family group, um, those of you who are not, you're all welcome. It's just we have a private messaging group on Facebook where we all kind of communicate and stuff like that. I love that. That's awesome. It's been amazing. Um, Danny kind of is the one that really kicked that in the butt, and it's really just taken on a life of its own. And I, I love that. It's been a powerful tool, but it's not there for the whole world to see. That's one of the things I love about it. Yeah. We also have a, a Facebook um, a private uh, group that, that sometimes we broadcast certain things that we don't want public, but just for you guys to be able to see. Um, I love that too. That's, that's a powerful tool. Okay. Um, and, and so th those, but you know, I really don't see those as social media because they're private. They're connected to the same companies, but they're, they're private. So it's a slightly different thing. It's been great for advertising and getting, you know, getting our stuff out. So that, that's fine. But that's got a different thing than social media. And like Sarah said, personal fun, family photos, um, you know, pictures uh, of, of your dogs and your kids and of your, your vacation on the North Shore and stuff like that. And fish. Fish for sure. Fish. In fact, that stuff is mostly what Facebook... Yeah, fish, yeah don't do anything toxic around the fish. Yeah. But that sort of stuff is really what, what, what Facebook and so much of social media was built on was, was that fun interaction stuff. How I many of you remember those days? You know? It wasn't that long ago. What happened? Okay, that's what. So I'm I'm all for that sort of stuff. And here's the other thing: some people are called to it as a mission field, as a ministry field. They absolutely are, um, but most are not. Okay. How, however, yeah, some are called to it. Most are not. But the problem is, it's available to everybody, and everybody then wants to be that person who ministers or or does whatever. And I'll give you a good example. Ryan the Strange, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a platform that he's grown and thrived and everything. Because like, he, God, God's given him a plan. He's given him a mission, a vision, and he follows it, and he doesn't deviate from it. And, 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 it, and the stuff that comes out, because it's anointed, he's anointed for that platform, is powerful and is good. I wish I could do that. I've tried to do that. But, you know, that slow to... Or quick to listen, slow to speak thing it also includes this, <laughs> <laughs> and and I just don't have the, the Sometimes I'm just amazed at some of these people's restraint. I've actually said that in some of Ryan Lestrange's po posts. I'm like, the patient, your your patience. I'm amazed right now, you know, because I'm ready to. I would be ready to dive into somebody, and that's that. That point is that's not good fruit. Me diving in, e even if I'm right, right? So I'm getting ahead of myself already. Um. But the, the problem is, is, is those people have, have that anointing, they have that gift that God's placed them there. That's their sphere of influence. But so many, uh, you, know, you know, I include myself on this because it's, 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 it's the allure of social media. We just like the idea of our voice being heard, right? We like the idea of our voice being heard. Um, and, but, you know, just because we can say something doesn't mean that we should. Even, even if we're right. You ever seen the the, the thing that on on social media? Some guy at his desk at night, and the and the and the lights down on his computer, and he's typing f f feverishly, and his wife's voice coming from another room. Honey, come to bed. He's like, just a minute. Somebody on the internet is wrong. You know. He's, <laughs> we all laugh, but we know the feeling. Uh -huh. We all know the feeling. Okay. Um. And I, want, and I also want, want, want you to understand this, too. I, I want to uh, make this clear. There is a difference between sharing the Word of God and sharing our opinion of the Word of God. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Now, yeah. because we talked about this, the parable of the seeds, and we talked about this uh, in, in December, uh, the seed and the sower and all that. He, he, didn't, he didn't, wasn't picky about where he threw the seed. Yeah. 
Good ground, bad ground, didn't matter. You throw the seed. You, you put the word out, the word of God out. And, and we, we are not stingy with the word. Okay? So I'm not saying that we need to be stingy with the word. That's not what this is about. This is, we, this is about sharing our opinion of the word. Or even things that aren't about the word. Because when we're talking about planting, when I'm talking about planting here in social media, is I'm not uh, I'm not talking about planting the word of God. I'm talking uh, not talking about the word of God. I'm, I, I'm talking about our words, our words and our opinions. Okay. And why would we plant our words and our opinions in soil that's already toxic? Amen. Why are we wasting our time in that? You see Amen. see this? Okay. Now the problem with this is sometimes we use. The word of God to express our opinion. And then we sometimes we hide behind that shield, like, no, I'm just giving you the word of God. I'm speaking the truth in love. No, you're expressing your opinion, and you're using the word of God to express your opinion. Right? That doesn't mean your opinion is wrong, by the way. We're not even that's not even, we're not talking about right or wrong. We're just talking about why would you do that? Why would you waste your time doing that in toxic soil? What are you expecting it to produce? Okay? Because because uh I'll give you an example. Um, there's been, and I'll get somewhat specific with this, and, and this, well, if the right people were listening, is step on some toes, but they're not. Um, there's been a call, given all the election stuff, not going into that, but given all that stuff going on, there's been a call um, on some of the prophets of the Lord that, um, called, that said Trump was going to win, to apologize because they got it wrong. Now, putting aside some of how um, the prophetic works and all that sort of stuff, uh, they put out they put out the, this 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 uh, you know uh, this is what the prophetic is. And they talk about the prophetic and, and the prophets that missed that they should apologize. On the surface, that sounds good, right? And they may very well be right. I mean, if you miss it, shouldn't you own it? But here's the thing: the word of God actually doesn't say that if a prophet misses it, they should publicly apologize. In toxic soil. Right? It doesn't say that. Maybe it's a good idea. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But what they're really doing is they're expressing their opinion that these people should apologize. Using the word of God to express that opinion. But is it really? You see what I'm saying? And again, I'm not taking a side on that either way. But I'm illustrating something. A different way of thinking about it. But, but, but then, then what happens? Back and forth arguments, everyone's mad, and defriend, and don't want to talk to you anymore, and you're dead wrong, and then, then we're writing blogs and articles, and everyone's like, is that, the, is that the kingdom of God? No, not at all. So, and it's all coming because we're planting seeds in toxic soil. Amen. Why would we do that? We're not, none of us, when I started this part, none of us were surprised. None, we all come chuckled. Yeah, we know, we know social media is toxic. We know it. But we do it anyway, okay? There's a lot better things I could be doing, especially after the restaurants reopen. Oh, a lot better things we could be doing. I'll give you a scripture to illustrate this. Um, Deuteronomy 32. Okay, so the backdrop of Deuteronomy 32, it's the Song of Moses is what it's called. And what, what uh, is kind of through song being prophesied and talked about is uh, God is talking about a perverse generation. Okay, perverse generation that's missed it. Generation before, which is good, but now you're this generation, you missed it in all these different ways. As, and that's the context of this that we see now, picking up in Deuteronomy 32, verse 32, and it says, Their vine, that perverse generation's vine, comes from the vine of Sodom and from the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are filled with poison. Yes. How did the grapes get filled with poison? Because they were, it was planted in toxic soil. Yeah. And their clusters with bitterness. And their wine of venom, of serpents, the deadly poison of cobras. You seeing this? Snakes. The snakes, yeah, you snake, yeah, you guys know that we've been doing the snake thing, right? So, well, yeah, we could put it this way for you, those you know what we're talking about. There's snakes in social media, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. If you don't, that's all right. Talk to Coco after service; she'll explain it all to you. Um, now, clearly, this scripture, like us tonight, is is not talking about natural fruit. Right? It is talking, uh, it's more of a metaphorical sort of thing. That's exactly what we're talking about. And, and I want you to think about this. It references Sodom and Gomorrah, right? So what did God say to Abraham as they left Sodom and Gomorrah right before it was destroyed? He said, don't look back, right? Don't look back. Now, if we actually study this out a little bit, um, the don't look back isn't just don't look back. It was more like a 
looking back with longing, wishing I could go back to that. I, you know, he's, he's saying, don't, don't, go, don't look back at your old life. Don't look back at the thing I set you free from. Don't, 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 don't need to go back to Egypt. There's nothing good there for you. Everything that, that you need is in front of you, not behind you. That's the idea behind that. But what did Lot's wife do? She looked back, right? So you can put it this way. Don't look longingly at social media. Just, you know what? Again, stay with the groups. Do the stuff you need to do. But when it comes to this toxic stuff that we all know, if there's a lesson that we could learn in 2020, just don't even, don't even bother. Don't look at it longingly. I'm not, listen, I'm not telling you what to do. All right? But I'm trying to lay this out there to see that it's just really not worth it. All right? I, think, I, I think it's pretty obvious. It's just not worth it. Nothing good's coming of it. I, every day I see more not good things coming of it. Right? Um, I think that you should say, I'm very proud of this group. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, so I'll say, I'll say it online. Or I'll say it with a microphone so, so people online can hear. But we, have, we are very proud of this company. Sarah said this in one of those private message groups. Because you guys, you guys learned this lesson. And you've been doing awesome. And some of you in particular, you, you know you came through the fire and you, you resisted for a while. <laughs> right? But you came through the fire, yeah. <laughs> they may or may not be in the front row. I, you know. <laughs> Uh, the craziest, the craziest worst day on social media yeah. I have ever seen. Yeah. The, and people in the church and what they did, and nobody from High Praise Central Minnesota engaged. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, again, we, amen. You guys did awesome. That doesn't mean we don't have opinions. Yeah. All right. That doesn't mean that there's not times to stand up for what's right and do what's right. Amen. All right. I mean, I can, I can boldly say from the pulpit here that, 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 that violence and, and mayhem is not the answer, right? Okay? I mean, and there's nuances to that. I get it, all that sort of stuff, right? Okay? But, but um, we're, we're not, we, we, we need to start with, with changing hearts and, and speaking to hearts and healing and all that sort of stuff. And uh, understand, again, I have strong opinions on it, but I look at social media and I say, eh, it's just all toxic. Why would I dip my foot in that? Right? So, but you guys have been doing awesome. Um, and, and just keep it up. Because, because it, it, in, yeah, there's snakes. another way one might describe toxic soil, another, you know, again, this is a metaphor sort of thing, right? It's soil that doesn't produce fruit or produces bad fruit. We could also say maybe dry soil or soil in a drought. So if Sarah's word for 2021 is that is, is jubilee in drought, that means there's going to be plenty more opportunity to plant your seed, your words, your opinion in the wrong toxic soil. It's there. Okay? But if we want to experience jubilee, okay, how many of you have ever felt, honestly, got into one of those arguments on, on, online and felt jubilee because of it? <laughs> no. You thought you were, but no, they responded. And now you got it, and you get sucked into it for how long, right? Or, 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 or you, 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 you step away from it, but it just is it's always there. They said this, yeah. they said right. Yeah. Or we could be over here in jubilee, right? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, because because here's here's the thing we've we've seen it with our own eyes, right? In 2020 how this, this plays out and how this works. So it's a lesson that we can learn for 2021 and, can t and keep with us, all right? All right, fifth and final, real quick here. And we'll see about real quick. But um, <laughs> unity doesn't mean sameness. Yes. Unity yes. does not mean sameness. 2020 highlighted, at least to me, that, that we live in different realities. Now, I'm not talking some metaphysical sort of sense here. Okay, understand that. I'm talking about the realities of life, everyday life, some of the stuff that we take for granted that we talked about before, our liberties, our health, our hopes, our frustrations, okay? All those types of things are different right now in California than they are in Florida. Yeah. Right? They're, they're different. If you've been following the news, it is very different. And Minnesota is somewhere in between. Yeah. All right? I will stay away from the governor thing. Okay. 
outdoor dining in December. Come on, man. Okay, there I went there. Um, <laughs> Because here, here's the thing, we, we're all dealing with, in 2020, we're all dealing with the same virus and the same effects of that thing, okay? We're all dealing with the same one, but that doesn't mean our situations have been all the same all the time. And it mean, if our, the situation isn't the same everywhere you go, that means that the response would be different in different places too, right? Even the godly response yeah. might be different in different places because it's different situations. The, the different things apply. But the good news is the answer is all the same, and that's Jesus. Yes. Right, amen? You see, so different realities here, different realities there. Same answer, same source, same strength. Okay? Check this out. Um, Philippians 2, uh, verses 1 to 4. <laughs> Philippians 2, verses 1 to 4. Therefore, if you have any encouragement... Yeah, let me read it here. It's easier. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make, joy, make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, and being one in spirit and one mind. We're going to come back to that in a second. But hey, there's some joy for you, Loan, wherever you are. Okay. <laughs> Verse 3 and 4. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Yes. All right, now I want you to check this out. I'll go back and put this scripture up for, for a minute here. But we, we know the, the, the last part of the scripture. We probably all heard this one. Make the, then make my joy complete by being God's joy. It brings him joy. When we're being like-minded, having the same love, being in one spirit and with one mind, okay? But, now check this out. That word, the Greek word for like-minded there, okay? In the, in, in the context of the, 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 ver, the way the, the, the word is used, it means to have, now this is, you know, because you get the thing and it lists out the different definitions, all right? So this is what the definition of it is in the Greek. To have an opinion of oneself, to think of oneself, to be modest, and not let one's opinion, though just, of himself exceed the boundaries of modesty. It's okay to have an opinion, but don't get all big-headed about the opinion. There are limits. There is lines you don't cross. This is like-mindedness. It's part of like-mindedness is saying it's okay for, uh, for Andrew and I to have different opinions. But he better have my opinion. No. <laughs> Um, it also says to think or judge what one's opinion is. Okay, now that's not about others. That's about to judge yourself, to 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 to, to be contemplative, to consider yourself, your own opinions, your own words. Okay, and then um, to be of the same mind, agreed together, cherish the same views, and find, in the last part of that is to be harmonious. To be harmonious. Now, when we go forward to the word of one accord, that word accord also translates basically um, to harmony. So we see this thing about opinions and all that, but also being in harmony with those words. Now, I want you to understand something. Andrew could come up here and talk for a long time about harmony, being a, a, a music major, a music guy, right? The thing about harmony is when you're singing in harmony or you're playing in harmony or you're a band, what happens is, is you are not always singing or playing the same notes, right? The, I mean, that would be kind of dull and bland if everyone was singing the same thing. The coolest things, if you ever heard, especially those, those um, um, uh, acapella groups that are all singing different harmonies, the amazing things they can do, they're singing different notes. And what happens is when the different, but the different notes, they're all singing different notes, but they're singing the same song. What happens is, is they come together, even though they're different notes, it's the same song, different opinions, different ideas, different callings, different, different um, visions that God has given, different, different things that you're supposed to do, all these different things, but same song, same source, right? And when we realize that, and we don't think our, our song, remember the, the first part about being modest about our own opinion? Oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm singing for soprano and, you know, and all that sort of stuff, right? <laughs> that you got that, that modesty in there? What happens is, is this, okay, the music people are laughing at me. 
what that's the high one, right? Yes. Well, wouldn't, wouldn't somebody be like, I'm the one that can hit those notes. I'm proud of myself for hitting those high notes. That's what I was thinking, anyways. Um, <laughs> Apparently that's funny if you know music. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, me singing like uh, Mariah Carey or something like that. Yeah, Y'all would be running out those doors. Um, but uh, but what happens is, and Andrew and I have had the conversations when the, when everyone's singing in harmony together and comes together, there's actually something cool that happens called an overtone. And there's a sound, a resonant sound that goes above and beyond just the, the in, in individual parts. High, ooh, there's something, if we put on our prophetic eyes, maybe there's something higher above singing along with you. Ooh, yeah. it's harmony, right? That, that's, that's harmony. So, so understand what this scripture is saying. Uh, make my joy, make God happy by being like-minded and having the same love and being in one spirit and one mind. That, that, that I want to, also, uh, one spirit translates to one accord. Um, but... Uh, to be harmonious with one another, okay? Now, the last one, though, um, is, is, is fascinating to me because when it says of one mind at the end of that, when it says of one mind, it's the same word as the like-minded, but it's different context, which is why it's translated differently, different verbiage, right? And so in that context, it means to be wise. Isn't that cool? So we need you to be in harmony, but be wise, that's what that being of one mind means. And we, we know and understand, biblically speaking, wisdom comes from God. In fact, uh, wisdom is the proper application of godly knowledge and understanding. The proper application, the godly application of um, godly knowledge and understanding. So, putting all this together, being like-minded gives us freedom to be ourselves and have our opinions as long as our opinions don't cross a line that causes division. Mm -hmm. All right? And at the same time, we need to be working in harmony with one another, each doing their part, not the same part, mm -hmm. each doing our own part to accomplish one godly goal in a godly manner. Mm -hmm. The advancement of the kingdom of heaven. Right? Or in, small, in smaller groups, it could be at, at the revived concerts, bringing healing and deliverance to many. Everyone doing their part, working in harmony, not doing the same thing. Kurt had a different job than Andrew had. I had a different job than Sarah had. You know, and different people led different nights to different things. Sometimes it was like, you know what, this person here needs, this person needs Kim. Kim's, Kim is an expert in this area. I'm pulling Kim over to him. That was, that was hard. It's crazy and chaotic. You were in that room. The absolute chaos. Yeah. What heaven heard was a harmony. Yes. And there was an overtone yes. in that room that yes. brought healing and deliverance. Yes. Amen. Amen. We wouldn't have seen the breakthroughs we saw if you guys weren't working in harmony. Because that brought something greater in. You with me? So I want to ask you this then. Does that sort of thing sound like something that might be important in 2021? Yes. Right? Is there something that might be important if we want to see God's favor manifest? Yes. Yes. It's critical. And again, circling back around, unity does not mean sameness. In, in kind of in the negative, well, and the positive here in this church, uh, we saw what, what disunity can do in the, in the body of Christ on the same social media we were just talking about and, and beyond, right? We saw, we've seen what it can do. But here at High Praise Central Minnesota, you guys came together. We came together. We prayed together. We, we worshiped together. We, we, we decreed and declared together in unity, right? Taking, taking, sometimes taking turns. You, you do this and you, time to you this time. We had different things where people were taking different hours of prayer and things like that. We all came together in unity, in harmony, you know? Oh, we need snakes. We'll, we'll call on Snake Slayer. Coco to bring things in. Oh, we, we you know, <laughs> you know, e leaning on each other. There's spiritual snakes for those of you. Yeah, spiritual oh, snakes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, I should we're say not, that. We're not, it's, a, we're it, not a take up those actual. No, snakes. no, we're not an actual take up snake. And so I, I, some, you know, we've been talking about it so much that I forget. Sometimes people might not know what we're talking about. Long story short, Paul Island of Malta snake bit him. It came out of the fire, bit him, shook it off. It's kind of like a teaching that we've been doing on that. That's what we're referring to. Yeah. It, 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 these, these, these things that come in and try to uh, ambush you and get you. Okay? That's what we're talking about. And, and we're really talking about kind of soul wounds 
when we talk about that. Anyways, um, uh, so, so we've kind of seen both the good and the bad of what uni unity can do. And the lesson that we need to take forward in to 2021, if we really want to see these amazing, amazing words come to pass, we have to be unified. Yes. We have to. And that, again, you have permission to have your own opinions. Just don't let it cross the line. Mm -hmm. You know? Everyone will have different giftings and talents. That's great. That's wonderful. That's the way it's supposed to be. We don't get jealous. We don't get envious. We, we celebrate with one another. And, 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 and we're, 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 you know, one is weak, another is strong. That's the way it's supposed to be. Right? right? That's how things are you know, supposed to work in, in this coming season. I, uh, guys, I honestly believe if, if we can take these principles and put them together and, and, and really understand them and grab hold of them and not let go of them, the things that, that, that were promised and, and prophesied for this coming season, these are the tools that we need to get there. And we're going to talk about now next week what, you know, about what we need to do actively do, um, uh, based on on what what was prophesied here in this house. But um, I just want to close with this: the things that we talked about here tonight are larger corporate things, you know, kind of big ticket things that we can all relate to. But it doesn't stop there, right? I want to challenge you to take some time tonight, this week, whatever it is. Um, to, to meditate on and, and reflect on um, what you learned personally in 2020. The things that God taught you, showed you, revealed in you, personally in your life, in your family, in, in, in that sort of context, right? Or in another way, how did God consecrate you in 2020? Right? Well, you, we've gone through all these five things. Apply the same mindset, the same principle, and do some self-examination about the, about the positive things that you can carry forward in 2021 or, or the negative things that you need to leave back in 2020, okay? But what is it that God did personally in your lives, that you, the lessons that you learned, that you can carry forward so you can see the full, come on, the full manifestation of God's promises, his plans, his purposes, his, the explosive amazing things he's going to do in 2021 and beyond. Do you guys believe that he's going to? Yes. Do you receive that he's going to? Yes. I believe it with all my heart. Amen? Amen. But th these things are critical. They're critical. And we can't lose focus. Again, I'll just I, I close it with this reminder. When things die down, we're tempted to go back to old patterns and old ways of thinking and doing things. Right? Carry these lessons forward with you regardless of what's going on around you. Amen? All right, you guys stand to your feet. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Father God, for, for just how good and amazing and awesome you are. Through every, all the craziness that, that we've uh, all corporately and individually gone through in this past year, that, that somehow you've turned it all into, into something that, that is going to propel us and launch us into this next season. And so, Lord, I pray that as, as we go forward into this coming year, that you continually just teach us and train us and that the lessons that we've learned are etched into our hearts, etched into our spirits, that, that, that all, the, all the, the garbage is left behind, the filth is less left behind, but the godly lessons are etched on our hearts so that we can go boldly before the throne of grace, that we can walk in unity with, with one another, that, that, that we can focus on what's good and pure and not what's toxic. And we believe in every single promise, in every single word that you've released, and that we will that we will see the fullness. We want to be those that receive not just a piece, not just a part, not just a first fruit, but the fullness of everything that you have for us. We believe it. We receive it tonight in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray, Father God, as we go, we're, we're going to do extras and all that sort of stuff, but so bear with me. But as people go, come and go this coming week, Lord, I pray, Father God, you give us, every single one of us, an opportunity to be a blessing um, to somebody in, in, in the world around us. No matter how big, no matter how small, Father God, I, I pray that you give us that opportunity to be a light, to be an expression of your love. Lord, use us outside of these walls for the advancement of your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.